your body and diabetes. This is Alice. She's going to help us understand about healthy eating, digesting our food and how this affects those of us with diabetes. Eating the right things in the right quantity is part of what you need to keep you healthy, along with exercise and looking after your mental and social well-being. On a basic level, your body is like a machine. Energy that comes into your body as food is used to power you. We don't run on a single type of fuel like a car. To be healthy, we need a variety of nutrients, such as carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals. Also, we don't eat a constant stream of food like a car. We have it in bursts through the day. But having our food at regular intervals is important. Our main source of energy comes from carbohydrate foods. Having diabetes, you will know that the amount of carbohydrate in your food is important. To understand what happens to carbohydrate in the body, we will need to see inside Alice. Food is made up of carbohydrates, fats and protein. These nutrients are digested into smaller parts, which are used by the body for different purposes. Carbohydrate foods are broken down to glucose, which is transported via the blood to our tissues to be used as fuel. Glucose is the main energy source for the brain. Glucose needs to enter the cells in your tissues to be used as fuel. Insulin is a hormone that is made in the pancreas and allows glucose to be transported into your cells. You can think of insulin like a key opening the door to let the glucose into the cell. Your body likes to have a certain amount of glucose in the bloodstream. When more glucose is in the blood, more insulin is released to transport the glucose into cells that need it. As we don't eat all of the time, and energy is needed all the time, even to breathe, the liver releases stored glucose when it gets low in the blood. This cycle normally does a good job of balancing the levels of insulin and glucose. You probably know there are two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. In type 1, the body is not making any insulin at all. Since the glucose can't get into the cells without insulin, the level of glucose in the blood rises and rises. Injections of insulin allow the glucose to be taken up by the cells. In type 2 diabetes, the body either does not produce enough insulin and or the insulin is not working well. This is called insulin resistance. Insulin resistance means the cell doors are resistant to insulin and not opening when insulin tries to be the key. To help insulin work more effectively, type 2 diabetes can be managed by healthy eating, regular exercise and in some cases medication. Some people with type 2 diabetes will require insulin injections to manage blood glucose levels. There are many things that make blood glucose levels rise including physical or emotional stress, illness, too much carbohydrate, or because the production of insulin can decline over time. Since we now understand what diabetes is, let's see how healthy eating can help manage diabetes. To understand this, let's look at what foods contain carbohydrates. Grain foods such as bread, cereals, pasta, noodles, rice and quinoa, starchy vegetables, potato, sweet potato, corn and legumes, fruit, milk and yogurt, cakes, biscuits, ice cream, chocolate and chips. Remember that all carbohydrates within food are broken down to glucose or a simple sugar within two hours of digestion. For people with type 1 diabetes, it is important to understand how much carbohydrate is within food to help match their insulin injections to their food intake. For people with type 2 diabetes, it is important to understand the amount of carbohydrate eaten as this will impact blood glucose levels. Carbohydrate foods are also broken down into glucose at different rates. This rate of release is known as the glycemic index. Let's see how different carbohydrate foods affect blood glucose levels. The glycemic index is a scale of 1 to 100, according to how they raise blood glucose levels after eating. Carbohydrates can be categorized as having a low, medium or high GI. High GI foods will put a quick rush of glucose into your blood and low GI foods release their glucose more slowly. Aim to include one low GI food at each mealtime to help stabilise blood glucose levels. It is not just the type of carbohydrate that impacts on your blood glucose levels but also the amount of carbohydrate. 
For example, if you eat a large portion of a low GI food, such as a large bowl of cooked spaghetti, this can cause a high and longer rise in blood glucose levels. This is known as a high glycemic load. And therefore, if you have type 2 diabetes, it is important to enjoy pasta in a smaller serving size, such as one cup of cooked spaghetti, balanced with small portion of protein and plenty of vegetables or salad. The same goes for foods with a high GI. If you enjoy a small portion, this will cause a smaller rise in blood glucose levels compared to a large portion. You are probably also wondering where sugar fits in. Sugar does not need to be avoided, but ideally eaten in small amounts. A teaspoon of sugar, such as table sugar, honey or jam, all have a similar amount of carbohydrate and do not cause high rises in blood glucose levels when eaten in this small amount. Therefore, focus needs to be on the amount and type of carbohydrate in the meal when predicting how a food may impact on blood glucose levels. Speak to an accredited practicing dietitian to learn how much carbohydrate to aim for at a meal. People with diabetes do not need to buy special foods or cook separate meals. The whole family can eat the same healthy foods as outlined in the Australian Dietary Guidelines. Enjoy a wide variety of nutritious foods from the five food groups including plenty of vegetables and legumes, fruit, grain foods, mostly from whole grain varieties, protein foods such as lean meats, poultry, fish, eggs, tofu and dairy products. Remember to also drink plenty of water as your drink of choice. If choosing soft drinks and cordials, artificially sweetened varieties are recommended in moderation. Having diabetes doesn't mean that you need to avoid special foods such as cakes, biscuits and chocolates. Enjoy these foods occasionally. If you drink alcohol, include no more than two standard drinks per day for both men and women and have two alcohol-free days per week. To maintain a healthy body and mind, it is important to balance your food intake with regular physical activity. Being active should include planned exercise such as swimming or briskly walking and keeping active during your normal daily routine. Therefore, for good health, try to avoid sitting for long periods of time.